Hi, I'm Dr. Arthur Bradley, and today I want to talk about how you would test a Faraday cage. So normally if you're going to test Faraday cages, you need quite a bit of test equipment. You need a signal generator, an amplifier, an antenna, and then something at the other end to receive the energy. Normally we use things uh, called spectrum analyzers, which detect the energy and they just provide a little display of what those, that energy profile looks like. Now the problem with that is by the time you add up all that test equipment, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so of course that's not very practical for just somebody who's built, you know, an ad hoc Faraday cage and they want to know how well it works. So today I want to talk about a different option, a low cost option to determining the shielding effectiveness of a Faraday cage, either a box maybe that you've wrapped with foil or maybe something like an EMP bag or something like that. And so first let's talk about what the options are. Well, one thing people often try is to use their cell phones. Uh, the idea is, well, we can take our cell phone and put it inside the Faraday cage and then if we try and call it and it rings, then it must, the Faraday cage must not be any good. And if it doesn't ring, then the Faraday cage is good. And that's really a pretty bad test. And for a number of reasons. One is that cell phones don't work at the right frequency for our test. The second thing is we have no idea of what the power level is that the tower is transmitting to our cell phone. And finally, we don't know what the receive circuitry is like. So we don't know how sensitive the cell phone is to receiving that energy. So between the frequency and not knowing the power levels, it really doesn't tell you anything whether the cell phone rings or does not ring. All right, so it's not a very good test. All right, so then the people might go next and they might say, well, I'll use a two-way radio. I'll put one radio inside of the Faraday cage and I'll keep one outside the Faraday cage. And that's actually a pretty good idea because the, the radios work at around 470 megahertz or so, which is right in the sweet spot for an EMP test. Because again, EMP is a very broadband event. It goes from maybe 100 kilohertz to about a gigahertz but it's only the high frequency stuff that's going to affect small scale electronics. So testing at about 470 megahertz is actually a great uh, frequency to test at. The problem is that two way radios transmit with way too much power. So if I put a radio inside of my box and it's a pretty good box here, I will easily be able to talk to the radio with another one. All right. And the reason is, is there's just so much power being transmitted and the receive circuitry is so sensitive. All right. And of course it's that way so that they can talk very long distances. So it's, it's just not usable. There's no Faraday cage that you would really be able to build that would block a two-way radio signal. It might take 120 or 140 dB of shielding, and that's just not practical to build. So the question then is, well, what can you do? You can't make up your own um, broadcasting station. You can't just pick a frequency and start broadcasting at it. That would violate the rules of the FCC. So you have to use a given frequency that's already allotted to commercial applications but the cell phone's at the right frequency and we don't know enough about the signal and the two-way radios are just way too powerful. So what option exists? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you next. All right, so let's talk about a practical way to determine the shielding effectiveness of a Faraday cage. So the way I approached it was, I accepted that two-way radios were great in the sense that they transmit at a frequency that's ideal for EMP testing. 470 megahertz is right in the sweet spot of the energy we wanna make sure we're blocking. All right, so, the first thing you can do is you can decrease the transmit power by replacing the normal antenna that comes on the radio with just a little stub antenna. All right, now I'm gonna talk about in great detail how you build this system up in a separate video, all right? So don't worry about that right now. But you're gonna replace that antenna with a little stub antenna and that decreases the transmit power significantly, all right? But that's not gonna be enough to do, the, to do the job because we need to have a way of actually controlling the amount of energy that's received at the receive side, all right? And to do that, we need some kind of attenuation that can be adjusted. So what you do is you use a second radio or receive radio and you put it inside of a shielded enclosure. Now it's very important to put it in a shielded enclosure because if you don't, the energy will actually couple directly into the radio. It will avoid the antenna altogether. It will just go directly into the radio and you can't control it any longer. So by enclosing it in a, a shielded box, we can force the energy to come down through the antenna. And then what we do is we install a variable attenuator. That's just a box that has little buttons on it that let me dial in how much attenuation I want the signal to face before it gets into the radio, all right? And by doing that properly, you can determine the shielding effectiveness of anything, of a Faraday cage or an EMP bag or whatever. And I will talk about in a separate video exactly how that's done, and I'll even do an example of how I determine the shielding effectiveness of an EMP bag, all right? So right now, don't worry about how it's done. Let's just follow the general idea. So the idea is I'm gonna transmit energy. It's gonna come into this shielded box through this antenna. It goes through a controlled amount of attenuation and then it goes into the receive radio, all right? 
And so that's this system that's been built up here. And again, I'll talk about in the assembly video exactly how you build this up. It may look complicated, but you can actually build it in about two minutes. All right. So it's very straightforward. Again, the purpose of doing this is we want to have a controlled amount of attenuation. We want to be able to control how much energy gets into this radio. And by doing that, we can determine shielding effectiveness of really anything. All right. So again, I'll talk about that in a separate video. This one, I just wanted to introduce the idea of a low cost Faraday cage tester that will allow you to determine the shielding effectiveness of your Faraday cages. All right, so be sure to check out the other three videos. One of them I go into detail about how it works. The other one I talk about how it's assembled. And then the final one I, talk, I do an example in which I use it to test the shielding effectiveness of a very high quality EMP bag.